Hi there again, everybody. This is Hayes Griffin here. Thank you for joining me for the second installment of my Flat Picking Essentials Cross Picking videos. Today we're going to be checking out George Shuffler's break on Another Day, Another Dollar. If this is the first lesson that you've looked at and you're unfamiliar with the term cross picking, you might want to head back to uh, part one of my series and do a little bit of review. But if you've had a chance to look at that one already or you feel like you're pretty familiar with cross picking, let's get started. In the last video, I played an example of George Shuffler's break on Another Day, Another Dollar, both with the down, down, up cross picking style and the alternate cross picking style. Today, I'm going to exclusively do the down, down, up cross picking style and then allow you to experiment with the alternate pick style yourself. So, with that being said, let me play the break one more time just so you guys can get it in your ears and then we'll start to break it down a little bit. Now that that's in your ears again, let's go ahead and start to break this down a little bit. Before we go any further, make sure you're capoed on your second fret here, and we're going to play out of C position, but technically in the key of D since we're capoed on the second fret. Um, for simplicity's sake, as we move forward, I'll refer to everything through their chord positions as opposed to the key we're playing in. I think that'll be a little easier to remember. So there are three pickup notes to get into this break and they start with the lowest note of your C chord here. So they're all gonna be down strokes and they sound like this. So a hammer on on your second fret of your D string. And you're ending up on your G string up there again. And then one. So, after we play those pickup notes, we hold our C chord and we're going to play the cross picking pattern from the D string through the B string, so the top half of that C chord. So check it out. The whole thing sounds like this. And then hammer on. And you'll notice the cross picking pattern on this isn't the standard down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. It's three down, down, ups in a row. Like I said in my last video, Shuffler tended to kind of mix up the pattern just to fit the melody correctly, so that's where this is coming in. So one more time. The next passage that Shuffler plays is actually just an arpeggio of the C chord that you're already holding, so you don't need to do anything different with your left hand, really. And uh, it, it sounds a little bit like this. So really slowly, that would be your C, open G, hammer onto your E there, and then open G and C and then a pull-off, a really quick pull-off. And you land back on your C. So the whole thing in time again sounds like this. So everything up until this point sounds like this. And that last low C note that we play is actually going to go right back into another cross pick pattern. 
It's the same pattern that we played on the D through B string grouping a minute ago, but now it's going to be played on the A through G string grouping. So check this out. After that cross pick pattern on the low strings, we actually jump back up to the next string grouping and finish out the phrase. So the whole phrase sounds like this. And if you notice, when I jump back up to that next string grouping, like we had done a minute ago, I'm doing a hammer on, and it's a very specific kind of hammer on. So you strike the open D string, and as you are hammering on to that E note, you pick the G string as soon as you hammer on. It's a technique that Earl Scruggs actually used on the banjo. That's kind of how he did a lot of his hammer-ons. And it can be a little confusing at first um, to try and coordinate the movements between your right hand and left hand. So listen real close again. Last bit again is next we're gonna do that same kind of hammer on only on the top half of your F chord so grab your F chord and we only need the top three strings so don't worry about putting your ring finger down if um, that bothers you um, and then we're gonna play the open G and then hammer on to the second fret and then pick the next note down while that's happening. So like this. And the whole passage uses that same cross picking pattern we've been up to. So check it out, it sounds like this. So what I did on that fourth time through the cross picking pattern was actually put my third finger down on the third fret of the G string and make it uh, an F suspended chord for a second. Um, the reason that Shuffler does that is because that's actually the melody note that um, you would normally sing. So check it out again. So that's how that section ends. And what I'm doing there on that very last bit is uh, just a partial C chord. So instead of grabbing the whole thing, all I need to do is put my index finger down on the first fret there and uh, play G, strum the top three strings, and then C, strum the top three strings. So right after that, Shuffler goes into a uh, partial C7 chord. So what you're gonna do is leave your index finger down on the first fret there, put your ring finger on the third fret of the G string, and then your pinky on the third fret of the high E string, and then do that same cross picking pattern we've been doing. And this time it's actually the one we learned initially, so the down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So the whole passage starting on the F chord hammer on sounds like this. And then we go straight back into that F chord without a hammer on this time, so pull-off combo there on, on the G string second fret and then that same kind of harsh pull-off we did a little while ago to get us back into that full C chord shape. So after 
we do that pull up, we're going to do the exact same cross picking pattern on that low string grouping that we've done before, and then kind of walk our way up into an open G chord. So check this out. So to break that down a little bit, we do three times of the down, down, up cross picking pattern on that low string grouping starting on the C. And then we jump up to the next string grouping. Same pattern, but only once. And then we grab the, the third fret of our D string and then hit that C note the high C note there. So again, the whole thing. And then we just grab a, a, an open G chord, a one finger G chord here. So put your third finger on the third fret of your high E string and play the same pattern, that down, down, up. And then grab the first fret of your E string, back up to the third. So the whole thing together again sounds like this. Now after the G chord, there's only one short passage to go. Um, you're going to put your ring finger here on the fourth fret of the B string and alternate back and forth between the B string and the high E string to create this kind of bluesy sounding um, rub. It sounds dissonant right there, but in the context of the lick it sounds really cool. So. thing again there. And then a hammer on from your C note up to the D. And then back to the C. And strum down the whole C chord. Now that you've seen a full breakdown of this solo, I would suggest practicing some of the individual sections by themselves and then attempting to put them together into the full solo. When you think you're ready to put them together into the full solo, I would suggest practicing with a metronome at a really slow setting and then bump the, the setting up every few days until you can play it at full speed, maybe 100 or 120 beats per minute. After you do that, it's probably beneficial to go check out some other George Shuffler breaks um, or even Doc Watson or Clarence White. All of those guys play within this style and the more breaks that you learn like this, the more likely you'll be able to come up with these things on the fly and apply them to your own vocal tunes or tunes of your choosing. Well folks, I think that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thanks so much for tuning in and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There will be more lessons coming out in the near future, and that's the best way to hear about them. Please check out the link to my website below, hayesgriffin.com. There you'll find tablature for everything that we discussed today, plus other bluegrass guitar-related materials. Feel free to leave your comments and questions in the section below. And until next time, happy picking!